Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. This is going to be episode number 446. Uh, This is Jason Harrison talking about new products uh, coming out uh, at Kuyu. If you need more information on these products, you can go to kuiu.com and go to their website. Uh, I had a great time out there getting to meet a lot of podcast listeners. It was great um, uh, getting to shake hands and and meet a bunch of new Kuyu customers and uh, just people I haven't met. And I uh, saw a bunch of faces that I have uh, been friends with for a while, and it was great to reunite. Uh, guys, uh, thank you for supporting this podcast. If you have any questions of me, you can send me an email at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. Uh, I appreciate you tuning into the podcast. I appreciate your support uh, on my Instagram page, at jscottoutdoors. And I know you guys are going to get a lot of value. I also recommend if you want to go uh, online, you can watch uh, the Facebook live feed uh, and just go to Kuyu's Facebook page uh, and you can watch both the afternoon or excuse me, the morning and the afternoon sessions. And uh, it was just a great time out there this weekend uh, at Kuyu, a phenomenal company uh, from top to bottom, was able to meet a bunch of employees Uh, of the company and uh, share time with them Uh, and it was uh, just a great great trip so guys I hope you get some value out of the next uh, handful of episodes here and thanks for listening some of the new products we're introducing uh, this year or that we're releasing that we've released or that we're releasing in the next month or so Uh, and I'm going to take you through these products and I'm going to leave some time for questions you guys want to ask me questions about anything about the business about products Um, I'm going to have a Leave some time so I can answer those questions for you. Uh, we all love packs, and we added and made some adjustments and changes to our pack line this year, starting off with the new Ultra Series packs, which are designed to focus on weight reduction and really streamlined designs for those that, that really care about ounces and grams and weight. And in the past, we've made it our packs you know, incredibly minimal on the Ultra Series focused on weight reduction, but customer responsive, and we love how light they are, but it'd be, be nice to have a couple pockets for storage if you had an extra stuff at pocket on the side. And so we listen, and that's really what we've done this year is added a few more features to the Ultra line, but still focus on keeping weight down on the pack series. And then we've felt like there was some size gaps that we were missing. And so we've we filled in those size gaps with with a, a series of new packs in the Ultra Line, and so the Ultra Line now starts at a, a 2200, or it starts at 1800, but the new pack is 2200, so it's a a larger size day pack, and it's really a size is for me is really useful. 1800 is pretty tight if it's not a summer hunt, and so this is going to give you a, a a larger day pack to hunt with. It still goes on the frame, and inside we added. A few more features. I'm going to pull out some of the stuff that's stuffed in here so I can show you. Into the Ultra Series, but we put in storage pockets on the back panel. And we also put a hydration pocket on the back panel as well. And you're going to find this on, on all the new Ultra Series packs. So it's going to just help keep your gear organized. For me, using the Ultra, as I was putting everything in, a, in our zippered dry bags, and they end up in the bottom of the pack. This is going to help keep things organized, and by the time you add up all those zipper dry bags, weight-wise, we're not really giving up anything by putting in the zippered pockets on this, on this new Ultra Series pack, pack line. So we added in a 4,000 cubic inch pack on the Ultra Series. For me, using this pack, it's, it really lets you do those shorter bivy hunts, three to four or five day hunts. If you pack smart and you're worried about weight, this is a great size for those type of trips. Or if you're hunting late season where you got a lot of insulation, and you're bringing optics, and a 3,000 cubic inch size range pack really isn't going to be enough. This 4,000 cubic inch pack on those types of hunts is going to be outstanding for you. And then we added in the Ultra 5500, which stepped down a little bit from the 6,000, added in the storage pockets into this pack, and added a, a second stuff-up pocket on the side. So 
really takes that 6,000 cubic inch pack and, and really a more full featured version of that at, at 5,500. We dropped the size down a little bit because we came out as well with a 7,000 cubic inch ultra pack, which for me is my go-to for sheep hunts. Just large enough for a 10 to 14 day backpack trip. We added in the side pods to it so you can put your spotting scope or zip your rifle action into this pocket if you'd like with the two zipper heads. It's got two storage pockets that's inside this vertical zipper pocket so you can access gear because you don't have the horseshoe zip. You can access gear from the vertical zip here. And um, the 6,000 previous I, I could use on sheep hunts, but it was pretty tight on size. And there was, if you didn't like putting your optics in the back panel of your, of your pack because you're worried about banging them on rocks, this lets you move it to the side. And the additional space, really for me on a, on a 10 to 14 day sheep hunt, is a perfect pack. And it's going to save you a couple pounds versus the Icom 7200, which is our other large size pack that's, that's you know, more durable, more features. So those of you that really want to focus on weight reduction, the Ultra Series is designed for you in the suspension of the bags. But you're going to give up a little bit on durability on the fabric versus Icon Pros. But now you have the organization that you didn't have before. So great new additions to the pack line, filled in some size gaps, and um, I think made a better pack with the new Ultra Series. So the Stalker 500 is a new pack for us. It's really a dual purpose pack. This is set up so it can hold your hydration bladder and clip into the back panel of our icons or our ultras and functions as your bladder holder. These straps are designed to tuck into the back panel here when you're hanging inside the back, back of your pack. We designed this so that if you spot an animal and now you have to make a stock, you can quickly unclip this, pull the backpack straps out. Now you've got your water in here. You can put in rain gear, or if you need to put in insulation or puffy in the back panel, your headlamp, some food. So when you make that, that final stock on an animal, you have some essentials that you need. If that animal gets up and moves, you can, you can actually move with it and not worried about finding your pack or having what you need should the weather change or you kill the animal and you're going to be out late. So this also works as a great just light and fast pack if you're hunting from the truck, doing short day hunts. I found this to be big enough to do that as well. And it's also a great training pack too. So it's a great addition to our pack line and something that I think is really useful, especially if you're on a backpack hunt and you need to make a stock on the animal and, and you can take the stuff you need with you on that stock. I'm gonna grab, so, we just developed and released the new Venture Series packs. A lot of you may have seen this pack, it's on the site, it's an 1800, and then later this, this month, we, or next month, we come out with a 20, a 2300 cubic inch version of this pack as well. And for day packs for us in the past, the 1850, you could take the shoulder straps and hip belt off the, the frame and put them on that pack, but we didn't have a standalone day pack. So it was pretty expensive for guys to get into you know, day packs and, and using, uh, using Kuyu day packs. And so we, for the first time, created a day pack that's got its own built-in suspension and really Understanding that the goals, goal is of, of our day packs, having good storage, having good access, having the right size for different types of hunts. I think Sean and the development team nailed it on the size and the feature sets and the weight on these packs. We've got really comfortable, pretty robust suspension on our day packs. They're made with, the Venture 18 is made with our 330D high tenacity Cordura fabric. So best lightweight fabric out there that you can that you can buy and then set it up with compression straps that can be unclipped and moved around the pack depending on where you might need to either tie things on cinch things down um, or you can move them if you don't need them and they're set up very similar to what we've done in other packs with the top pocket vertical storage pocket in the back 
and then internal storage, like I showed you on the 2200 on the inside of these packs. So I think for me, having a, just a true day pack, you know, you can be, I'm going to use a lot, especially on local hunts, hunts for not backpack hunting. And so you want to take a look at the, the Venture 1800 and the Venture 2300, just depending on how much stuff you carry when you're hunting. For me, the later season hunts where I'm going to carry more gear, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the, the Venture 2300. The Venture 2300 is made with 500 denier cordure or double rip stop, so it's going to be a little bit more durable fabric. The hip belts on both the packs are removable, so if you don't want the hip belt, you can quickly and easily pull it out or put it back in depending on what you're doing. Both hip belts come with two side storage pockets. And then also an accessory strap that can be clipped in if you want to put a firearm, bear spray, or you have other accessories you want to attach to the hip belt, you can do that with a, with a strap that clips in and uh, Velcro's over, similar to what we have on the Icon suspension. So feel free to come up after the show or after my presentation, you can check out the packs, you can try them on. We've also got them in the showroom. So we've, all, we've also introduced Recently, I'll start with this, the Pro Pant. A new pant called the Pro Pant, which is really driven in development and design from requests for, from mountain guides, hunting guides like Lance. Guys are spending 200 days a year in the, in the mountains and needed something a little bit more durable. A single pant that can take them from early season all the way through their later season hunts. And something with a knee pad. And we went to Tori, our, our Japanese fabric partner, and said, we love, what we're looking for is something that has four-way stretch, something that is comfortable to wear, but has abrasion resistance, higher abrasion resistance, and that is more resistant against picking with, you know, cat claw or a briar type of brush, which on four-way stretch fabrics is a challenge by how it's woven, because they have to have a, they can't weave the, the, uh, the yarn tight to have stretch and recovery. So Tori spent about a year and a half developing this new fabric for us. Still really soft, quiet, comfortable to wear, great stretch, and it is more abrasion resistant and it is resistant against briars or cat claw from picking. And uh, the other feature we put on this and an upgrade to what we've done in the past is a new knee pad. And it's a new material on what we put over the top of the knee pad. It's a synthetic, it's essentially a synthetic suede, which so it wears like leather, but it's got a nice soft hand feel and dries a lot faster than like if we, if we did put leather there. And in the past, our knee pads have been comfortable to wear. They're thin, but they've been kind of a, a little bit noisy. These are significantly quieter. So if you're crawling in on a stock, uh, it's not going to get the, the grinding like we've had in the past on, on rocks. And um, is just a better forming and, and more comfortable wearing knee pad. This pan is set up like our attack pants, two cargo pockets. Blaze, am I getting out of your picture? Hip vents. So if you're, and the fit's gonna be similar to the attack pant. We've got a, a little bit of new seam design and in a way we've done the articulation knee that I really like. So if you like, the, you like the wear of an attack pant, but you're looking for something that's just a little bit more robust as far as durability, performance with the knee pad, this is the pan I'd recommend. Or guys that just spend a lot of time in the mountains or if you're a professional guide, um, we built this for you guys. So check it out, it's an outstanding new pant. And uh, I think you guys will really like it. Something else you guys may have noticed, or if you haven't, we're starting to introduce a lot more solids. And I'm excited about it. The response to it's been outstanding. Finally in a position as a business where we can afford the inventory to bring in solids. In the past, we couldn't keep up with camo, so we hadn't done a lot of solids. You're gonna see more and more solids coming out. Some are gonna be solids that are great to wear every day. Others will be, we'll always have some solids that you can certainly hunt in as well. So take a look on, our, on the website, and we're gonna have more coming uh, with the goal to have everything that we make with a solid option. So here's a couple, a couple versions of what we've done. We've had a lot of requests in the past for blaze orange, excuse me, I'm gonna jump down here and get rid of this stuff. 
in a blaze orange vest for hunting with states that's a requirement for, for rifle hunts. So we have the guide DCS vest now available in blaze orange. We just released it last week and we sold a bunch of them already. So it's a great choice. It's soft shell, it's, it's uh, wind resistant, it's treated with DWR, two chest pockets. And it's a great product and now it's available in blaze orange. The pant that hasn't been released yet that's coming is the access pant. And it's set up similar to the new Pro Pant as far as the design, the pocket, and the knee pads. It's the same stretch woven fabric as the Pro Pant, but in the butt and the seat, we developed a new fabric through Torre that is waterproof and breathable and seam taped with a micro check backer, which is what you'd find in like the Chinook Pant. So it's going to help. It's, it's going to give you a little bit of warmth, but really it's to help um, help with the comfort up against your skin if you're wearing the pant without long underwear down in the lower leg and the seat. But it's going to allow you to do is in wet conditions, it's going to let you stay in this pant longer. So the the seat, the lower legs, and up through the knees are all waterproof and breathable in this pant. And what, what I love about what Tori did on this fabric development is quiet. A lot of times when you go to waterproof, breathable, and you bond membrane to the fabric, it becomes really noisy. With the MicroCheck fleece backers, it's staying really quiet. So for me, on, on mid-season and late-season hunts where it's going to snow, you're going to be in, it might rain, or you're just climbing through wet stuff in the morning, this is a great choice of a pant. Sitting down and glassing, you don't have to put on your rain gear. And it's a pant that you're going to, our goal is to have our customers be able to wear it in a wider range of conditions without having to put their rain gear on. So this pant uh, will be released in the next month, so look for it on our website, look for it on the announcements. It's called the Access Pant. And it's a pant that I'm gonna be in every fall because if you're bow hunting or rifle hunting, hunting deer, it's not always great to be sneaking in or, or hunting in your rain pant. So watch, watch for that one coming in. It's an awesome, awesome pant. Anything I missed? I think, that I think that covers all the product, Pat. So I want to open it up for questions. Anything that I can answer for you guys on product, on gear? Do So the question is, for those of you following the line or couldn't hear the question, do we have, uh, do we have rain covers or pack covers for, for all of our packs? And we, and we do. We, we have uh, a rain, yeah, we have rain, multiple sizes of pack covers for rain, and we, uh, we have them in the showroom. So we do have them and recommend them. Yeah, we do have some smaller sizes. I don't know if we have them out as small as the day pack size yet, but good question. Anyone else have any other questions? Yep. Is that something that you guys are still looking at and possibly doing something? So the question is about tripods and something that uh, I've been working on and developing. Is it something that we're still doing? And, and I am. I'm um, working with an engineering company right now, working on uh, tripod heads and then also a tripod as well. I don't feel like there's the per perfect solution around weight and functionality that's out there. The best functioning heads and tripods really are set up for videography. And we, give, you know, we pay a weight price for that. So it's a, it's a project I'm working on. We've got the first prototype head. Some of you might have seen it on social media. And it's an aluminum head, and it weighs about six ounces. So we've made comments back. They're working on the next prototype that I'll be testing here shortly. But uh, the initial prototype was pretty impressive. We still have some work to do. But it's the goal. What about quilts? Have you looking into quilts at all? thought about quilts. Um, I just, for us in, in backpack hunting, what we face, especially on sheep hunts, is just a wide range of temperature swings. And there's times when you, if you bring a quilt, temperature swings and drops, now you're stuck with a quilt, you're gonna sleep, a lot of times sleep cold because of it. Um, for me, I use the 30 degree bag, zip it open, and throw it over the top of me. 
and it essentially functions as a, as a quilt, but then I can jump in it if it gets cold, zip it all the way up, and use it as a mummy bag. You pay a little bit of a weight penalty, but our bags are incredibly light. But we thought about quilts, um, we just haven't, haven't developed one yet. But any of those niche products, any of these ideas, if we hear from customers, we'll just certainly take a look at it. If we get enough requests, a lot of this product is developed because of customers asking for it. We came out with Super Down, for example. The guy said, could you make a sleeping bag out of this down? It's amazing. So we went into sleeping bags. So thank you. Yeah, anyone else wants quilts out there, email customer service and let us know how many of you might be interested because it's how we develop a lot of our new products is through customer and customer feedback. Good question. He, the question was, do, is our, our bow carrier and rifle carriers that you clip on the, onto our packs adaptable to the new packs? And they are. They're, they are adaptable to new packs. And all these bags interchange off our frames. All the accessories that we have that do attach to the packs will attach, attach to the new packs as well. A good question. Who else have any questions? They are, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So the, if you look at the Venture Packs, the zip belt comes with a side pocket. So you look at it and say, how do you attach a firearm to it? We have an accessories trap that attaches through these loops that we put there just for that. It comes through and then locks with, with Velcro so you can slide on a, a firearm, you can slide on bear spray. It just sit over the top of this pocket. On our bigger packs, the Icon suspension and the Ultra suspension is set up the same way. If you don't have, you can remove those uh, hip belt pouches and that accessory strap sitting right underneath. So you have that versatility. It's a good question. So the question was, if you're not going to step up for a European glass, Swarov, Zeiss, Leica, what spotting scope would I recommend? Two of them that, w that seem to be really popular with our customers that we've used here in the office, some of the guys use in the office, are Vortex, which is a popular brand. There's also a brand called Maven Optics. It's an online direct brand that sells really good high quality Japanese glass. They just don't sell it through retail, so you get a really good value, similar model that we have. And you can kind of, what's kind of cool about Maven, you kind of custom design, whether you want it in our camouflage, you want certain colors and aspects, um, and their glass is good. So I look at both those. Good question. So the new pants that came out, the question was, are they designed for August style hunting? Um, or is there something different coming out? Our Tiburon pant that we have is what I recommend for August, August hunts. It's the best warm weather fabric that exists out there in technical fabrics. Because the micro openings in that fabric, it blows right through really light, dries really fast. For those of you that haven't worn the Tiburon on a hot hunt, highly recommend it. You'll never wear anything else. These are really mid to late season type hunts, you know, September th through October, or if you're going up north for sheep hunts, this would be a pan I would choose too. It's a good question. So the question is, you put bring ringer with you or is the access pan enough? It's not enough. If you're gonna be hunting in really wet conditions, you still need rain gear. This is gonna let you stay in that pant during wet conditions much longer. Um, or wet mornings where you're climbing through brush or tall grass that's soaked, that lower leg is gonna stay dry. If it has rained and it's no longer raining and you need to sit in glass, you don't have to get in your rain gear. You can sit in that pant and the butt's not gonna be wet if you're sitting on wet stuff. So that's, that's kind of the goal and the problems we're trying to solve with that pant, but it's certainly not rain gear because it does have stretch woven fabric, it doesn't have tape seams, and it's not 100% waterproof and breathable. Yeah, good question. Hey. Question was, that seems like, or the comment was, that seems like a perfect pant for pheasant hunting because you're going through grass and brush that's wet in the morning and you keep your legs dry, it would absolutely be fantastic. It'd solve the, that purpose. I mean, you can wear, I mean, this pan, if you don't like to hunt in gators, will replace that essentially. 
because that lower leg will, will, will stay dry from the outside. Yep. Good stuff. Yep. So the question is, the comment was, it's hard to access spotting scopes and tripods in most packs. You got straps or you got internal pockets. It's hard to get to it quickly. And if we address that in our pack line. One of the challenges is the weight. Spotting scopes are heavy. Without the straps to compress it into the pack, it has a tendency to, to move around a lot. Our pack line, we do have the straps to secure it. You could certainly not attach the straps depending on where you place your, your scope, whether you, if you put it in this back pocket, these compression straps are removable. You don't have to have them on here. So you'd have just a single zipper and access. And this back pocket will take up to like a 95 millimeter swirl. This pocket extends up high, so you can put the, um, put the, the lens up into this pocket and the bottom of the scope down in this portion. You can get a 95 in here. And without these straps, you could access it quickly. On the side pods, you kind of have to strap it down. I guess if the pack was completely full, you could put it in there and it wouldn't move around too much. But if you want quick access, that's where I'd recommend putting it. But it's a challenge because of the weight and wanting to move around, especially your pack's not full. Does that answer? Yeah. For the most part? Yep. Yeah, the comment was with the strap locations, if you put it on the side, if you just stick it in the side pod, only one strap's holding it, and you have a tendency to lose the scope. Yeah, I, I would recommend either running it here versus just putting it on the side or get, the, get a pack like the 7000, which is specifically designed with the side pods here to put a scope in. These pockets are a little bit unique in design, the fact that two zipper heads zip, zip together and open the pocket from the top and from the bottom. So really the purposes of it, you could put an object in there that's longer in this pocket, leave the zipper open the bottom and use either stuff up on the side or if you want to use a rifle carrier that hangs down below this, you can zip in the scope and the action. You could run a tripod all the way down too, yep. So if you've got a really tall tripod, that's what it's set up for. What's that? This is the new Ultra 7000. Our Icon Pro 5200 and 7200 have the same pocket set up. Yep. Questions? Any other questions? Great question. So the question was, is there certain areas of our product line that I enjoy most as far as testing, developing, and always trying to perfect. I think for us, it's, and for me in particular, all of the products are always a challenge. I think we're our own worst critics. We design and develop a product. And so we're always looking, I'm always researching new fabrics, new materials. We've got an amazing relationship with Tore out of Japan, who's, the, I mean, by far the, the world leader in technical fabrics. Also materials like DWR, waterproof breathable membranes, antimicrobial treatments that we put on our synthetics. And we've become their largest brand in the world and that buys Tory fabrics. And so we now have a, a, such a close relationship. We're with their fabric development teams. We're with their material development teams. And we're able to get feedback from customers, from us, guides like Lance, that are truly pushing the limits of, of our product, product line and we're able to go back and work with them to help solve some of those problems we're facing. And for me, that's, that's awesome. I mean, it's what I love. It's, I mean, it's the reason why I built Kuyu the way I did um, after I left Sitka, because we had so many restrictions because of the retailer on what we could build and what we could make. They wouldn't buy it because it was too expensive. By the time they put their markup in, no one, they, you know, there's, their concerned customers would buy it. So this, for us, without those restrictions, 
we can work on solving these problems in a big way. We're not worried about what it's going to cost more, how we're going to fix it, and how, how to improve a product. Um, I think, you know, the, the pack line for me, developing the world's first molded carbon pack frame, is kind of my, um, kind of my most proud product I've designed and developed, because it was blue sky development, something nobody had ever done. Apparels, for us, jackets obviously and pants existed before I got in the business. Our goal is just how do we make them better? And how do we take what we know now and improve upon it, which we're working on with Tori on a continual basis. So, um, and then just listen to customers' feedback and solve them problems that we're hearing from them as well. Luggage line, like our take who bags, you know, it's really a, we're trying to solve the problem of traveling north with luggage when your bags are set out in a gravel um, runway in the middle of nowhere and it's raining. And they got to get in a super cub, so you got to have them small and pliable. It's those types of things I think that really, you know, solving those types of problems um, is what really drives us here at Kuyu. I know drives Sean and Haley and the development team and also our supply partners. Um, but yeah, you guys, kind of all of it. <laughs> um, you kind of solve one problem, you're on to the next one. Good, Chris, good question though. Mm-hmm. So the question was, all of our webbing straps are cut square. Can we cut them on a slight angle? We can cut them on a slight angle. And I'll tell our development team that I kind of agree with you. Easier to feed through if I had a little angle to it. Okay. This is stuff we love to hear. Simple. Easy, easy to implement that one. <laughs> cut it at an angle. No, I'll let Sean know. It's a good idea. So I face that too, trying to feed it through. The other. What environments do you switch back and forth between your camo patterns? The question was, which camo pattern for which environment? Essentially, right? Good question. Both of them. My my belief in camo is, and the influence of our camo patterns is based off the evolution of predators and contrast versus mimicry. If you've read our stuff on camouflage on the Kuyu website. If you look at predators, they don't look like a leaf or a bush. They use contrast to break up their profile, so it makes it hard to recognize. And if you've seen, if you ever, you know, African wild dogs, if you've ever been to Africa, if you've ever seen one, they're really hard to see, and they don't look like anything that's out there in the environment. It's because they're light and they're dark, and you see either the light or the dark. Both of our patterns function in the same belief through contrast, a larger scale contrast versus small details. The VS was originally created for sheep hunting, um, and both of them are great for sheep hunting. This has got a higher contrast for longer distance, you know, to break up your profile at longer distances. Um, for me, it's the it's you're hunting alpine country, you're hunting dry country down the deserts. Um, if I had to choose, I would choose VS for that. For if you want a more versatile pattern that will work in you know wider range of hunts and hunting conditions. Verde is probably the better choice. If you want to use it for turkey hunting, Verde is probably the better choice. Or you want less contrast for the type of hunting you're doing or the type of environment you're, you're, you're hunting in, Verde is a better choice because it's not as high a contrast. Both of them work in everything because animals don't see color and we're using contrast to break you up. So some of it's personal preference, but this will kind of blend in more than Vias does in the wider range of conditions. Does that answer it? Yeah. Good question. Anything else? How are we doing on time, Blaze? Ten minutes. So the question was, if there's not, you're not worried about moisture, which pant between the pro pant and the access pant is warmer? The access pant will be. Because anytime we put a, a waterproof breathable membrane into a fabric, essentially makes it windproof. And then the micro check backer that's in this pant, essentially makes it function like a soft shell, is going to be warmer as well. Is it our warmest pant? It's not our guide pants, the warmest pant we make. If you're looking for a really warm pant, it's completely a soft shell pant with a little bit thicker fabric for later season hunts. The guide pant. Yep. 
heavier fabric, and it's made with the same fabric that's in that vest or in our guide jackets. It's an awesome late season hunting pan. It's a good question. I'll do this one, I'll get to you after, is it? Good question. So in regards to boots, do I wear a stiff boot year round or just when I'm sheep hunting? I wear the same boot year round that I wear on sheep hunts, it's our Scarpa, uh, the Rebel K. I've, once you move your, once you start using a stiff boot, it's really hard to go back to a boot that has more flex in the midsole. And testing the, our revolutions that we carry, they're great. But I was wanting a stiffer boot for me. And the stiff boot, the mountaineering world has figured this out a long time ago. Hunters are just kind of figuring this thing, figuring it out is that stiff midsole just gives you an immense amount of traction in really steep conditions because you can plant the corner of that boot into the side of a mountain. And because it doesn't roll, it gives you a platform to push off to take your next step. And then when you're carrying heavy loads, having that, that stiffer platform keeps your foot from rolling and sliding and helps avoid foot soreness. And so, and because of that, I've gotten so accustomed to liking that stiff midsole, I use it for every hunt. Again, it's, boots are kind of one of those things, personal preference, how they fit your foot. Um, one of the things we've learned in the development of our boot line with Scarpa is that really the advantages of synthetic materials over leather. A lot of times in the past, synthetic materials, you kind of gave up durability and um, performance using synthetic. But the modern day synthetics that we're using with Scarpa and our boots with Superfabric, we're not giving up any durability or abrasion performance on our boots. But what you get is a boot that dries faster, breathes better, a leather boot on a sheep hunt when you're in and out of rivers and it's constantly wet over a 12 day or 14 day period that leather will stretch the boot doesn't fit the same and it never dries so there's some and it doesn't it's never going to breathe as well when it's wet versus when it's dry even when it's dry the breathability between a synthetic and a leather boot is significantly different um, so i hope that answers your question So the question is, what pack am I using on my long hunts, Icon or Ultra? I've done both, obviously. My preference is Ultra, especially on big sheep hunts. As I've really started working with the sports science laboratory at UC Davis, trying to, you know, doing some study and research on trying to measure pack weight and human performance. It's really brought to my attention how I've known it in the past and we've talked about it. There's great other sport examples out there like cycling where they've proven through science that weight matters for climbing mountains, but trying to put data behind it. But what we've started to uncover is how really significantly important it is. And so for me, I, I prefer the Ultra Pack. Um, you can mix and match the suspension too. You go with the Icon suspension if that fits you better. They'll fit body types a little bit different. If the Icon hip belt doesn't fit you well, the Ultra probably will. Um, if you're conscious just about weight, Ultra suspension, but for me, my new go-to you know, multi-day sheep hunt pack is the new 7000. I used it last year in British Columbia. It's got about the right amount of space for a 14-day hunt. Don't have a lot of room. You got to pack smart. But um, that's my go-to pack is the Ultra Series. Yep. You know the the what's great about the icons is durability, access, and storage. Now, if those things are important to you, overweight, both great choices. Good question. So the question is, is there, or are you considering looking at where geographic areas where you're shipping a ton of product, certain city, certain region, and we'll be looking at opening up a retail store in those locations. And we are working on a plan to start to open up specialty shops like we have here. It'll be our own stores, Kuyu stores. And Denver's kind of the top of the list right now. It's not official, but we're starting to build out a, a business plan around that starting to look at potential locations. And because we have all of our customer data, we can really look into what you're talking about and figure out where the, where the stores need to go. The goal is to open up one in Denver in, in 20, and then look at additional locations for additional stores. Do you live in Denver? Should. <laughs> we are. 
We're all going to be looking for great people. And that store is super fun to be in. So let us know. Good question. I can't wait to do retail show, uh, stores. It's going to be fun. Five minutes? Okay. Excuse me? So other countries? Stores in other countries? We do have, so the question is, are we going to put, look at putting the stores in other countries? We do have a showroom that you can just try stuff on in Spain. You can't purchase there, but there's reasons that make it difficult for us. We have to set up a different business name. But that's in uh, Los Ibanez in Spain that was set up through a relationship I had with, um, with the guy. It's really essentially customers that have that space for us. They kind of gave it to us to put there. Um, for us, you know, looking at the international markets, will we do showrooms there? I would love to say we absolutely we will. It's just going to be a matter of time. We got a lot of work to do here in the United States first, but um, the showroom experience is outstanding. And I know people really appreciate the ability to touch it, feel it, try it on, look at all the different range of products. And so I think showrooms for us is, is certainly the future, just being very smart about it. Everyone's talking about retailers going out of business. I know why. We're not going to be a big box. We'll be small specialty shops just selling to you. But yeah, I'd like to be, I have a, a global retail presence eventually. Any other questions? I got about two minutes. So, does a lot of late season hunts. His hands get cold. What gloves are you using? So you're running the North Stars. Have you tried the Expeditions yet? With the neoprene cuff? What temperature are you hunting in? Where? So Montana, late season, Alaska, later season hunts, having cold hands. Have you tried the Super Down Mittens? Is this when you're hiking? When you're sitting? So we make the, the down glassy mitt. They're in the showroom made for exactly that. And really the design was driven by, by Lance and Brendan for northern sheep hunts or cold weather hunts for sitting and glassing. Same with the Super Down Pro to go with those. Um, but yeah, that'll solve your problem. And they weigh nothing. And if you get really cold feet in your sleeping bag, you can slip them over your toes at night too. <laughs> I've had to do it before. <laughs> or if you're sleeping out. You got, Time for maybe one more question, please. So the question is on a, essentially like an adventure race, right? Like you said, a ranger challenge. Are you a ranger? Marine, thank you for your service, by the way. And thanks for coming out. Which pack would you would I choose? How much gear do you have to carry? How much weight well, on adventure race? So you got to have enough stuff to carry for two days. And you sleep. You're not sleeping in a tent, or are you? Yeah. So you're not gonna carry a tent. It just depends how. how for me, it's it all depend on kit. You shouldn't need much. I would probably be in the stalker 500 if it was me. <laughs> if you got to carry some weight, or they some of these races require them to carry 40 or 50 pounds, I would go into like the ultra suspension to use our frame to help support that. And I know some guys like John Wayne Walding, Green Beret, they just did a big, um, they called the Baton Death Race in New Mexico, and they were using the ultra packs because of how light they are, but they had to, I think they had to carry 45 pounds or something like that on their race and they, they loved it. They said it worked really well because of how light it is. We also have a load sling. So if you don't have to carry much, that might be another way to carry some weight too. It just depends on what you're doing. Yeah. All right, so, so maybe do one more question, if it's quick. Question, are we gonna do rattlesnake gators? Not, probably not. Just be quick. Uh, just as, I mean, for us right now, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty specific niche product. When you're hunting sheep up north, we never have to worry about it. Um, you know, down the road, if we get enough requests for it, something we can look at. I just don't want to be the one that tests them. So I'll develop them, you test them, tell me whether they work or not. <laughs> 
All right, so we got about 15 minutes before the next seminar. And it's Lance is coming up first. Let's Lance, do, yeah. I'm going to do a quick. So the guy, the guy came and picked up the, the RSVP. So the first guy came and picked up his RSVP, but we have a raffle, right, for those of you that showed up for the event? If you guys come up and give me money, I'll make sure I pull your raffle ticket, by the way. So who? Ticket number 127004. And we're giving away another 250 bucks? Yeah. This is getting get really expensive for me. It's your idea. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was my idea. Anyone have that ticket number? 127004. All right, winner, winner. So it's a $200, $250 gift certificate for Kuyo. You might as well keep it. Only way I give it to you is you spend $750 when you use it. No problem. All right, brother. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, dude. Congratulations. What? It's the talisman. Oh. So Pat corrected me. This is a talus pant. We have an access pant coming in, uh, soon. Excuse me, correction. This is the talus pant. So if you're looking for the access pant, you aren't going to find it. Too many concussions for playing football. All right, so we're going to take a 15-minute break. Feel free to, to get some water um, and be ready for Lance Cromer. He's going to give you a great talk on hunting Alaska. <laughs>